it's uh, one of my favorite topics because because you're right. Most people don't know it, and, and it's happened in the lifetimes of many of us, and we haven't really had a, a good explanation of what exactly happened back then. And at some point, I, I intend to write a book about that era. Uh, and that era, what I'm talking about is period between 1971 and 1973, some momentous things happened. But the main driver of this change was when the United States took the world off the gold standard in 1971, uh, it meant that the world went from fixed exchange rates to floating exchange rates. And why is that important? Why is that significant? It's some uh, arcane fact in monetary policy. What, what does that have to do with us? Well, um, the, one of the problems is that most people don't separate monetary policy from finance. Because most of us understand finance, it's, it's uh, how um, <coughs> buying and selling works, and it's also how investment works. And we don't think about money that much, except that we know that it has some pur we have purchasing power with money. But we're more concerned about the prices of things than we are about the value of our currency. And the value of the currency only has meaning for us when we go abroad, mostly. You know, and then we realize that there's uh, an exchange value. Uh, between currencies. So thinking about monetary policy as distinct from finance is very important to understand what I'm about to say. When we went from fixed exchange rates to floating exchange rates in 1971, the right wing got its agenda uh, internationalized. And that agenda is deregulation. And from the point of von Hayek and Milton Friedman, it was a great revolution in 1971, even though it was a silent revolution. Because the headlines said, well, what does this mean? Well, it'll probably be just more of the same and nothing will change. Well, in some ways, nothing changed. And in other ways, things changed greatly. Inflation took off, and um, there were, um, the, it, it impelled uh, OPEC to raise oil prices, and all kinds of things changed. But the, the main thing to, to recognize is that in 1971, countries did no longer had financial discipline to link their the value of the currency to gold anymore. And that gold used to be it used to be, you know, every country used to have its a sovereign supply of gold, or they would link to another country that had a sovereign supply. And then, since 1944 to 1971, it was the United States had most of the world's gold, and so everybody would link to the United States gold. What this meant was there, were, well, there was monetary discipline, and um, these fixed exchange rates under, until 1971 forced governments to balance their budgets, and it forced uh, a greater degree of monetary discipline. So people ask me, well, what does this have to do with me? Well, and, and I don't remember this happening. Well, it's a, do, you, do you remember when the credit card companies used to start sending you amounts, huge amounts of credit cards. And in the United States, it happened right after 1971. And the reason is that, is that if the central bank of your country does not have to um, be disciplined about the money supply, then it can print the money ad infinitum. And that's what it does. And that's why the control of the money system, or the, the, money, the monetary system, the money supply, is, um, is subject to a huge change since 1971. And it's the first step of deregulation, which we know mostly through the neoliberalist interpretation of, of what happened later. Because there, in the 1980s, there was uh, deregulation of, of, of finance. In the 1990s, it's deregulation of trade. But before that, in order to get this whole deregulated policy in place, um, there had to be deregulation of the monetary supply. Uh, the monetary system, and that's what took place in 1971. Uh, and the, the reason why I, I talk about the credit cards is that we, when you had um, a, uh, an infinite amount of money that could be created without any particular discipline to, to limit the amount of money that uh, was, was linked to some precious metal or some kind of uh, reserve asset, then uh, it enabled people to say, well, we can just continue to issue credit without any restraints. And that's what's happened. And that's why people have gotten further and further into debt and wondering why. And of course, for generations that, like myself, that I can remember what it was like before that. And now what we have today in the younger generation coming up has no idea about any of that stuff. And most of us at my age have no idea about any of that stuff. But it was a qualitative change that took place during our lifetimes. So it's a, it's a longer-term uh, agenda.
agenda set by people who really believe in uh, bringing free market principles into the money supply, into central banking, and that's exactly what's happening.